Hey, what's going on folks? I just wanted to make a quick follow-up video to the last one where I was talking about order moving really quickly in Sierra charts. So I actually managed to configure something that is very workable when it comes to moving orders quickly in this platform. So I'm gonna show you what I did right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is enter a position just to show you what I have here. So you can see that it's a two lot trade. So I'm gonna have two limit orders and two stops. So let's enter the trade here. So now you can see I have a limit order here, another one there, and two stop losses here. Okay, so now take a look at what I've done here. I'm in a long trade now. I clicked on the buy column to enter this trade. So I've configured the platform now so that if I right click on the sell column above the price or below the price, it will either move my attached stop or attached target. So watch this, if I right click here, it'll move that order. If I right click here, it'll move that order. And on top of this, I've actually configured a button on my keyboard to perform the right click because I actually don't like right clicking. I find it's a little annoying. So I've put it onto a hotkey and that's pretty much it. The only disadvantage is that sometimes if your mouse cursor is on the price column, for example, you're gonna get this where you can just easily get out of that really quickly. So just make sure your mouse is hovering over the right column to move the correct order. So now there we go, the limit order filled. So we got lucky in that case. So I'm gonna demonstrate that to you another time. So I'll get into a long trade. I clicked on the buy column. And now I also have a couple of hotkeys to move the closest limit order up and down, which is a very useful button. So in this case, I'll try to fill that order right there. And now right clicking above the price will move my remaining limit order. Right clicking below the price will move my stop order. So basically what you can do when you're in a long trade like this is you can be hovering over the appropriate column to be getting ready to either scratch your trade or move your order or break even or something like that, okay? And let's do an example now if I was taking a short trade. So let's say I sold the market here at 24 something. It's the same idea. So I clicked on the sell column to enter the trade. Now I need to click on the buy column to get out of the trade. So if I right click on the buy column above the price, it's gonna move the stop order. If I right click on the buy column below the price, it's gonna move my limit orders. Since I have two limit orders separately, it's gonna move them both to the same price because remember it's move targets to price. So if I wanna just get rid of one, I'll just do that first. And now if I press my button, I can move that as well. Also, just a quick bonus, I've tested some input lag and this is gonna depend on the tools that you're using, but I've tested the input lag between my mouse and my keyboard and they're about the same. So there's no extra milliseconds input lag if I'm using my keyboard. I just find it very convenient to hotkey that instead of using the right click. Okay, so I'll just briefly show you how I configured that now. So you go to trade, then you go to chart DOM settings. Of course your chart DOM has to be enabled for trading. And this is basically how I have it configured here. And what you can do is you can copy these exact settings and I assure you that you will get the same result as I just demonstrated right there. It actually took me a couple of tries to get them set up correctly to perform the right tasks because the way this menu is laid out is a little weird, right? You have right click on the buy column above last. So anyways, we got it going and that's how I have it configured right now. Also really quickly here, this is my keyboard software, which is the Razer technology. And I've got these five macro keys on the left side of my keyboard. So basically I've programmed this button right here to be a right click. So that's pretty convenient. All right, the other ones are used for other functions. These two are used for moving closest limit order up and down. I've actually set up control key plus this button or that button to move unattached limit orders up and down. So that's an interesting hotkey. So let's say for example, you wanna bid him and then the market's moving without you and you wanna start trailing up your order, chasing the price in whatever direction. I think Sierra Chart has a feature called a chase limit order, but if you wanted to automate that or make that a little bit easier, you can also hotkey that function, which is move unattached limit order up one tick or down one tick, and then it'll move your entire bracket all like that without having to click, then cancel, then resubmit. Because often what happens is you can have an order, then another order, and then boom, the market comes back down and fills both your orders, and now you're long or short, double your position that you normally trade. So you don't wanna get into that. So what you can do is use the move unattached limit order up or down and that'll work fine for you. And of course, guys, the hotkey menu in Sierra Charts, go to global settings, 
then go to customize keyboard shortcuts, then trading keyboard shortcuts. And the hotkeys that I'm using in this video are right here. Non-attached limit order, tick up, tick down. Target order, tick up and tick down. And then we have move attached targets to price and move attached stops to price. And there's a couple other buttons like cancel all orders and flatten and cancel all orders. And the last button I use, which is just to clear the recent trading columns, that's a very convenient feature. In Jigsaw, you can clear them up and down. I honestly just got used to clearing them all at once because the data is being recorded on these footprints anyway, so it's not really a huge deal. In okay, case so you can have a number of different order flow charts that are showing you the time and sales transactions. So you don't always have to keep them on these recent traded bid and offer columns. This is basically just for reading that inside print. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, bye.